All right, seeing as American Idol doesn't want me showing off their stuff, I'll do a shameless plug for my cell phone company, T-Mobile. And I don't even have an agreement to do anything, obviously. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let me just say, um, I'm going to just jump right into tonight's episode, Top Ten. Um, I've just watched the opening. I've watched the intro where they go through the different seasons. Um, I thought it was very interesting how they just skipped certain people. You know, no Taylor Hicks. They didn't even really mention Ruben much. Um, they did mention Jordan. That was nice of them. Uh, notice they didn't mention the two Davids, neither one. Um, they completely dissed Chris Allen by including Adam Lambert. And then they jumped all the way to now. So, boy, I guess they weren't very happy after that season because nobody really has been a star. Even though I thought Scotty McCreary had a reasonably good success. Maybe he was just a one-hit wonder. I don't know. Um, I haven't followed his career that closely. If anyone knows, please update me. I would love to know. And I probably won't go research it. But anyway, I'm... Um, you know, I won't take it personally that they dissed the two Davids. Um, at least they brought David Cook back <laughs> for the duets. And I thought he sounded fantastic, by the way. So I'll give him credit for that. And um, I will put in a plug for my son, if anyone's heard him lately. Um, he's definitely a fantastic musician. And if he were on the show right now, he would stand out very clearly. Kind of like Jessica Cabral. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um so anyway, um, very interesting opening, and um, I was blown away that there was absolutely no dramatic buildup. They bring everyone out and immediately announce who's in and who's, who's out. And um, let me just say, I'm completely disheartened by seeing how America voted. America did not vote with their head, they voted with their sentiment to put Lee and both Avalon and John Isabella, first of all, ahead of Jen. Okay, that blows my mind. I mean, what were you guys listening to last night? Absolutely, America, you screwed up on this one. I'm calling you out on this one. Lee John does not belong. What were you guys listening to? Whoever voted, it's a bunch of little kids. What it shows is that no one really cares. There's not serious voting going on. For that to be the results, America, you completely blew it. I mean, and when I say that, okay, you got half of them right, but you got half of them wrong. You know, at least Jen should have been in, and really Geneve should have been in. She's much more interesting than what we're going to see, I'm sorry, from Avalon and Lee Jean. Um, and John Isabella, we've seen everything they've got. Now, when I say that, Avalon, possibly, but I don't think the other two, I think would have been a lot more interested in, in what Jen would do. But, you know, Jen, I think you your, your vibe was just a little too weird for people. I think that's the only thing I can say is you were odd and quirky, but you weren't endearing enough somehow. And I thought you were fantastic, fantastic last night. So America completely blew it. Jen Blossel was probably the best performance of the night and the fact that she didn't make it through I mean even Mackenzie there's something about Jen's performance that I thought was just inspired and and America you missed out you missed it okay this shows what's wrong with America this is show showing what the power of radio programming does to limit people's ability to really discern the quality of musicianship and again, it, it, it just shows people aren't really after who could be a bookend to Kelly Clarkson. Do you really think Lee Jean is a bookend? Do you really think that... I mean, Gianna Isabella's got a really good voice, but she's not in the same league. Go back and listen to Kelly first season. Listen to her, I Surrender. You know, listen to her respect. When she's saying respect, oh my God gosh, it just floored everybody. You know, the top 30, the first season where we first saw this first live top 30, when Kelly came out and sang, it blew everybody away. Okay, 
I'm sorry, it, this is this is just anticlimactic. Plus, how disrespectful to just kind of bring them on. Okay, well, you four, you're out of here. Okay, let's start the top ten. That reminds me of the season David was on Star Search and the Iraqi war started and they literally stopped the episode in the middle, right in the middle of the episode. And some of the acts had already performed and it was the finale. It was like, who's going to win the $100,000 grand prize? And that had the kids division and that had, let's see, part of the comics. And they were going to have the dancers and the adult singers. Well, in the middle of the comics, I think maybe one of them performed and the other one didn't. The Iraqi war started. So they literally interrupted all of the rate, you know, TV channels with Iraqi war coverage, and that was it for Star Search. Well, a month later or two, they decided to consolidate the beginning of the next season, which would have been season three, I guess. Yeah, David was season two, so this would have been season three. They decided to, to do the whole rest of the episode and cram it in to the opening episode of the third season. And so it's almost like no one, and half the country didn't even see the part that did air, which was David's portion of the show when he won. So again, half of America never even saw it. <laughs> and the half that did, it was literally 20 minutes before the Iraqi war started, and a lot of people might have been focusing on that. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh, it was just a crazy time. It completely took all of the specialness in a lot of ways away from the contestants because they didn't get to have a moment. Okay, it's kind of like what I just feel happened to those contestants that went through versus the ones that didn't. You know, those poor contestants. And like I say, Jen and Geneva got robbed. Maddie and Thomas, you were very obvious, but Lee John, come on, your, your performance. You really, you have to step it up. If you don't step it up tonight, then I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to get on you big time because you won't, you won't deserve it. And Jen stepped up. She was on an uptick. You were in a major downtick. So, again, America, you got to learn how to listen to people. I'm sorry, but, boy, we got to spread the word. Those of you that have friends that listen to this show and care enough about voting, oh, my gosh. You know, we need to put posts on the American Idol site and educate people on how to listen. You know, this is ridiculous. We want the best artists, not sentimental favorites. Okay, back to my uh, screensaver. Sorry about the distractions in the background. You're welcome to look at them. You're, they're much more enjoyable to look at than me. However, I listened to Olivia, and she comes out, and let me just say, she has got a great skill set. Okay, now, I hope she breaks the pattern of the opening singer being out. Okay, notice how I was so confident Manny was out. Okay, I knew he was out. I knew Thomas was out. I was pretty sure Lee Jean was out. And I really thought it was between Avalon and Gianna Isabella as the bubble people. Okay, America got it wrong. Let's see how they do tonight. But I'm going to be very very critical about the performances tonight. People need to step it up. So how does Olivia do? Okay, let me just say, first of all, she's been criticized for her feel, her pocket. So I've been listening to that very critically. Tonight, I think she did a really very interesting job with this arrangement. The judges called a lot of it, but let me just say what she did that was very interesting. Okay, I've talked in the past about there's a, there's a way of holding back the sound kind of con con uh, containing it so it doesn't, you know, jump out at you. <clears throat> Olivia has got both of those voices down. So what was really cool is the first time she sang the chorus, you know, it's, it's a chorus that's the same thing, they repeat it twice. So the first time she used it with that constrained voice where she held it back and didn't let it come out at us. Then when she turned it on the second time, it was fully that intense voice and that's the thing I love so much about her potential is that she's got such a cool powerful mix that's a mix like to die for there are very few singers that have that great of a mix meaning it's just got all that rasp 
and power and energy and it's really easy on the ears so like I said I think Olivia's got incredible potential and she's shown that she can step it up because her time and pocket and feel were really good the verse was real mellow and at first I wasn't sure about it I had to had to actually rewind and turn up the volume to make sure I heard where the pocket was because at first I thought she was off a little bit but when I listen again it's I think she did a really good job actually of she was laying back and so she's playing with the time a little bit and that's why I make, wanted to make sure there's a difference between laying back and dragging okay I won't spend time going into that right now if anyone really wants to know ask me all right what we will get into though is how well she made her contrast of her intensity and her power and it was just phenomenal she nailed those notes um, I thought she did a fantastic job so I do think she is gonna break the pattern this season of being the opening act and going home I very much doubt that she will be going home that was a fantastic performance all right so I just finished watching John Isabella and I listened to everyone's comments including Kelly's and let me just tell you this is absolutely validating why America screwed up and voted her through and she should have been one of the people that didn't make it because here's here's a perfect example okay now one of the things that like I say I should write a book about this because I don't understand nobody seems to get this that is the number one most important thing you have to know by now okay first rule is you gotta pick the right song the right song means by definition it needs to be a song that works in a minute and a half edit okay the second thing is you have to hide your strength or you have to hide your weaknesses and maximize your strengths and what John Isabella completely doesn't get and Jen Blossom did last night is you need to pick a song that will show off what you do well and hides what you don't do well and John Isabella from the very beginning I could tell this songs too big for her okay first of all there are too many true diva types that have been on the show that can sing listen okay the David season 7 Saisha sang this song every night on tour I heard it 75 80 times and guess what Saisha blows Gianna Isabella away blows her out of the water not even close and the difference is this is a song that's so big you have to have a voice that is in complete control at all times and John Isabella isn't there yet she's got a big voice but she doesn't have control yet and she doesn't have the emotional maturity yet and so as you could hear from the judges everyone kept whenever they say you're really good for 15 you're really good for 16 you don't want to hear that you want to just hear wow you just sound amazing when they start saying well you're really good for 15 what they're saying is we can hear what's missing still there's still maturity needed and that's why I was saying she shouldn't be in the top 10 because there were better performances Geneva was better and, and again who on tour do you want to go see do you want to go see John Isabella or would you rather see Geneva Come on, because Geneve's going to play all these instruments. It should be so much more interesting to watch. So I think it's really important now to understand that America blew it. You know, this is the last season. Now the two Jen, Jen and Geneve's are out. And now we've got to deal with people that are just, they're just kind of like, again, I hate to use the term, but it's true. It's the cannon fodder. I mean, you can just, I can see who the next few are going to go. You know, John Isabella, Avalon. Um, Lee Jean. Those are the next three to go, most likely. And they shouldn't even be, a couple of them, you know, two of the three shouldn't even be in. So I'm, I'm not impressed by the voting game of American Idol this season. And whoever's watching the show and voting, it doesn't seem like adults are voting this season. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so with that being said, John Isabella. This is probably your last week. And you're in the number two spot, which is just as just about as dangerous as the number one spot. But because Olivia was so strong and her song did, she did rise to the occasion. She didn't show her weaknesses tonight. And you really did. You revealed so many weaknesses. 
and there was just so much missing from your performance. I mean, I would give it, it basically, like I say, there's, I've got, I could, I could call half a dozen girls right now on the phone, record them here locally, post them on YouTube, and they would blow away that performance of Listen. Seriously, six girls I can think of right this second, right here in Salt Lake City. Gianna Isabella, just she just doesn't have the depth yet. She's way too young. She shouldn't be in the top ten. You guys blew it. There's a lot better artists that should be in here. Jessica Cabral. Okay, I'll move on. All right. I hate to say it, but I was very unimpressed with Lee Jean's performance. Um, again, it was just too vanilla. It was too much like what he did last night. There was very little different. And I think if this is his full range of motion, we're bored already. I'm thinking this is as far as America. So they're, they like him because he's a cute kid. He does have a very likable personality. I mean, don't get me wrong. And I do think he's got a nice vibe about him. But just as far as his skill set and as far as the quality of his performance. I mean, there's not anything that's been above a, an 8. And you got to be at 9 or above for this. I mean, compare this to Olivia. Even This shows me what... This is why I'm telling you he shouldn't even be in this top group. Okay, I don't think Geneve or Jen Blossel would have done as poorly as these last two performances. So, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that they're giving Lee Jean all these moments because he's creating some really good moments. The thing with Chris Medina was kind of cool. It did get a little long and I'm not sure why they drew that out as long as they did, but it was still kind of a cool thing. All right, now if we move from him, um, and, and again, I think the judges were fairly accurate. I think Kelly went way overboard positive for him, and that was kind of weird. But um, let's go on to Avalon. Um, same thing with Avalon. I kind of feel this that she also was underwhelming with that song because, again, we didn't see anything new. It just shows that she's soulful and she's, she's pretty good with urban pop songs. But does she have enough depth to do more? You know, I still feel that we're not getting enough out of her. And like I say, it's interesting that the people who I think were the bubble performers have been the second, third, and fourth spots. So, you know, so far I would say I'm very underwhelmed by our three of the top, three of the six that made it in. So I hope the next three are better, and I think they will be. But I'm still real, real kind of let down. I think uh, America got it wrong, and now we're suffering the consequences by just knowing they're going to go, and now we've got to listen to them. And better singers could have been in their spot, so... You blew it, America! you got to come listen to these blogs, and you, you're going to learn about how to listen. And you'll learn why, why we want the best people to make it, not just sentimental favorites. All right? Yes, you do. Okay, now. Sorry, here. Um, our next Enjoy contestant what? is Dalton. The way I do. And what I want to say I here is... Tony House. Is that... You know, one thing that I've... It's funny that I was kind of comparing him to David Cook, that he's creative and he keeps reinventing himself. And then to hear him go on and say, hey, you know, I uh, kind of admire David Cook. Well, I'll tell you what I like about Dalton. He's very smart. Okay, now what I mean by that is, okay, there are a lot of people that have good musical instincts, but they don't know how to get better. They're kind of stuck at a certain level and they stay there. And some of them do become really great, but some of them be, are good, but they never become great. Okay, now, what, what I see as being a necessary skill is the ability to continually find creative ways of reinterpreting songs. So this kind of show is a perfect test bed to develop and, you know, test and develop that skill. And Dalton is really doing a great job of experimenting with this. So I want to give him a lot of credit for that. Okay, now let's listen to his Hey There Delilah. And also, he understands the concept of mentoring. Okay, and that is pick some people 
figure out what skills you think you need to be successful in what you're trying trying to do and find people that do those things well and then see what you can learn from them. Dalton knows how to do that. Okay, that's one of the skills I try to teach my students is try to help them pick, for example, their three favorite singers. And then we try to get to know them deeper. We try to understand them better. We learn what we really like about them. And we get, what I do is I try to get them to pay attention to details. You know, to learn the little things that are going on. And the way you do that is you, you listen to your mentors and you get to know them and you gain depth of understanding of where they're coming from. Okay, well, that's true mentoring if, unless you can physically be there with them. And so, you know, I think Dalton has done a good job of picking a good role model, which is David Cook. And he, he analyzed some of his performances and the ones that he was impressed with. These other contestants need to do that. Okay, that's exactly what Gianna Isabella doesn't seem to be doing. Um, probably most of the others. You know, you, you really need to figure out what makes performances work. And that's why I think Jen Blossel should be in this top ten, because she figured that out last night. And her Cindy Lauper performance was really outstanding. I'm sorry that more of America didn't connect with it, because I think she absolutely deserved to go through it. Okay, I also think Geneve has that same creative desire. She's just more, she's raw. You know, Dalton's been doing this a lot longer. You know, Dalton's very competitive, too, and he's been in competitive musical environments. I don't know how much Geneve has. She's too young. You know, and she's just a natural, interesting person. And I'm sorry she's gone. I think her and Jen would have been much more interesting, like I say, than some of the kids that are in here. With all due respect to them, I just don't think you're as interesting. You know, you're interesting. You're just not as interesting as these other people. You know, I wanted to see what Jen would do. I wanted to see how Jenny would continue. So I'm sorry that whatever America heard last night made him think those two should be voted off. All right, um, let's continue with Dalton. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so Dalton's performance was exactly what he needed to do, except for one thing. So far, none of the judges are calling him on it, so I'm the only one calling him on it so far, and that is just... Okay, if you, if you look at all the skills, and they, they already were all over his performing skills, how comfortable he feels how good of a job he's doing of the energy of the song. And what's great is, by doing this, he's distracting them from focusing on what he's doing with his voice. So what he's doing is he's just, he's basically just got that California surfer guy. Um, you know, there's like half a dozen bands. And, and I, I wish I could remember what all their names are. But um, they're, they're probably all the, just over the last 10 years, all the kind of indie, you know, chord strumming bands. You know, you don't hear guitar solos. You don't hear really elegant virtuosity in the vocal. It's just, you know, in other words, they're not doing a thing with the notes. You know, Dalton doesn't do anything with his notes. So, okay, there's a whole category of dramatic effects. And what it is, it's, it's your ability to take a note and reshape it. Reshape it. Change the form of it. And it's by attacking it, by, you know, starting soft and crescendos. It's by vibratos. It's by raspiness, oh. different degrees of putting um, different sounds and there all kinds of things you can do. Well, he, he just does one thing. He just sings the note. It's the same thing I criticize Manny for where yesterday he just, with that Master Buster, he was just yelling the notes. He didn't do anything with them. Whereas Jen Blossel, for example, did exactly what I'm talking about. She took those notes and just caressed them and just did something brilliantly with them every single time and so did Mackenzie. Okay, so the real question is, how good a performance? Um, 
I think that Dalton right now has got all the energy going. You know, he's creating the emotion. So he's also showing that you can get by with less than average vocals. I'm not even going to give him average yet. You know, he's got to step it up to show me he's really got vocals. The good thing, though, is he understands what he's trying to do with his song. So he he's he's really good on the dramatic side. He's a great actor. You know, he knows how... He's a great character actor. Like I say, he's he's got a good role model in David Cook. And after seeing that performance, I'd say he's doing a fantastic job. And that's what I've been saying ever since Hollywood Week, is that he's done a great job of being a chameleon and being very creative. So like I say, I like his creative potential. And it would be great to see how teachable he is if he were to work with a vocal coach. Not that he needs to become a virtuoso, but he just needs, I think, more a, a broader range of what he can do with his vocals. You know, everything from growls and percussive elements and, um, you know, everything that has to do with sounds that you can make. You know, I just think he needs some variety. And right now, it's kind of like, you know, Thomas. You know how he's putting those little, you know, little uh, yodels at the end of every note. It's kind of like Dalton's got the same thing going right now where he's his acting and performing skills. You know what he's doing? He's like Taylor Hicks. Taylor Hicks had a way where, for some reason, he was able to put the right amount of energy almost every week. And people bought into it, even though he was really just a white guy impersonating Ray Charles every single week. Every single week. And it's like, why, I mean, you know, he's good, but why is everyone so crazy about him? And why has he got like this older woman group that are, you know, voting him through every week? It's like, I don't see him being a long-term, you know, pop star. And more importantly is, if you listen to him, he's just a Ray Charles impersonator. That happens to be white. So, with all due respect to him, I just never felt there was anything unique other than he was a great performer. He was a good entertainer. In other words, he knew how to put moments into his songs. Okay, that's that's kind of what I'm seeing with Dalton. He understands the psychology. You know, he he understands how to work the audience, and this is something that's a skill. And it takes time, and you know, you sh it just shows he's got a lot of seasoning. You know, he he knows what he's doing, so I do see him making it very far. You know, he he's right now he's he's definitely on the the radar for top three. Okay, just let me just say before the rest of the judges even finish, um, Tristan. Is doing exactly what I was afraid of and that is she doesn't understand the basic game of American Idol and that is you got to pick songs that show off your strengths and hide your weaknesses she doesn't understand how to pick songs and then do appropriate arrangements her team isn't working for her very well and again her best song was that song she did that was that more ballady singer-songwriter thing all these pop country songs she's trying way too hard to be something and I don't feel she's being herself so I'm really concerned about her being able to continue very well on the show you know I see her fading out fast unfortunately she's not improving you know if anything she's she's kind of getting worse each performance so regardless of what the rest of the judges say I'm just saying that she's delivering about a seven and a half it's more like she's trying to be this country pop girl and she's, she's kind of like an average pop singer with a big country belting sound, which is, you know, very typical for a young country singer. And again, she's like Gianna Isabella. Her voice is bigger than her maturity. You know, her, her musical maturity isn't ready for her voice yet. And so again, I just don't see the depth being there. You know, if you look at Jordan Sparks... If you look at a Jessica Sanchez, there was so much more finesse, so much more polish, so much more refinement, and just natural understanding of a lot of these elements that I'm trying to explain that I can tell none of these kids have. So, again, they're just, and, and you know, Jordan and Jessica Sanchez haven't had huge careers lately. And Jessica Sanchez, I don't know if she really even 
did much. You know, I think she just, she was too much of a power diva and wasn't really, a, you know, a, her personality wasn't reachable enough. So, you know, again, even if you've got a great voice, that's not enough. So with Tristan, she's sweet and everything, but her skill set, she is too young to win this. I'm sorry, she is too young to win this. That's all there is to it. What do you think? Make sure your voice is heard. Okay. When we come back, La Porsche so, Renee takes it. Mackenzie just performed, and let's look at his opening package. What's amazing about this kid, again, I, he's doing exactly what I expected, and, and again, I, I, I think we've discussed what his skill set is. And if you look at his package, he knows who he wants to be. He understands the opportunity that he's got before him. I think he's doing a great job of showing America who he is. And um, what was cool is Kelly basically just exactly said that. It's exactly what, you know, it's, it's interesting the perspe perspective that people have depending on how many years they've watched the show and how much you can learn by studying how the show works about music and also about what it takes to develop artistry and what the differences are between people that have that superstar element versus those that are good and even some that were great but there was just something missing that didn't give them the whole complete accessibility to the public so that they would continue and become a, a long time star. Now you look at Kelly, you look at Carrie Underwood, look at Jennifer Hudson, look at Daughtry. And if I miss somebody, I'm sorry, but they're the they're the most obviously the biggest careers. Adam Lambert, I guess. Um, they've got the biggest careers. There are other people that have done well, but not near as well. Now, what's interesting is that last performance, I think, does set a very interesting bar. Now, let me let me just say though, there are a couple of things Mackenzie doesn't do, and that is, he still doesn't really know how to sustain notes very well. It seems and put vibratos on them towards the end, but he does understand dynamics extremely well and contrast, and he understands how to build phrases and form them and shape them emotionally so that there's lots of ebb and flow and I do feel that he was brilliant in that last song in the arrangement and especially the way you ended it that you know about remember me and and the fact that he said it twice and ends it like that I mean I hate to say but that you couldn't pick a better song and it didn't matter that I'd never heard it before it was an Ed Sheeran song but I didn't know the song so Unless you're you're very up on Ed Sheeran stuff, that's a new song, but you didn't have to know it. Mackenzie did such a good job of communicating what he was feeling. And then, again, for Harry to set him up like that and give him a chance to restate what it was, why he connected to the song so well. Again, it just, it made his artistry really shine, and I think the judges validated it in every way. So, again, why Mackenzie wasn't one of the first four to go through, and great, we love Trent, but he's not better than Mackenzie. I'm sorry, he's just not. You know, Mackenzie's got more creativity, and he's got a clearer image of who he is. Let's see, though, if Trent can continue to grow. I'm excited to hear him tonight, even though I don't know if he's next. Stage. Oh, the Porsche's next. Sorry. That's right. Okay, so we're going to see the Porsche. Oh, no. All right. I'm just sitting here with my jaw on the floor after listening to the Porsche. Okay. I mean, that's exactly how to do it. You know, that's, that's taking moments and turning them all into nines and tens. I mean, that was just ridiculous the off the charts. That was just ridiculous. Okay, so what Dalton didn't do, what Manny didn't do, La Portia gave a, 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 a basically just mopped the floor and 
just blew everyone else under the out of the water. And La Portia should win because she's absolutely the best singer on the show and might be the best ever. <laughs> okay, so that was she deserves this standing ridiculous ovation. She's getting. You know, I I agree. It was it was just phenomenal musicianship. I've never That's seen anyone crazy. go from zero to ninety five on a scale of one to hundred. No one else has even got ten in them. The Porsche's got fifty levels. It is not my turn to speak. She's just ridiculous. I don't care because you, I mean, if I were you, <laughs> which I, God bless, I wish I were. Um, but if I were you, I would just every time I open my mouth, <laughs> just be like, "You're welcome." <laughs> <Because> <laughs> This is such a talent. You're not right. You're okay. going to win. If, if you don't win, win. I don't Yes, I'm, I haven't watched this, here, so I'm watching so, this first time so here. So blessed. So blessed. And it's your control to all I've heard. It's your yeah. control. Everyone's just amazed and rightfully so. Phenomenal musicianship. Phenomenal. Okay. Sonica. Now, what's interesting is I love this song absolutely love this song it's a song i know really well it's also one david used to sing it's also one that carly smithson sang every night of the tour and carly kills it she blows it out of the water and again so when i'm comparing sonica to what i've heard other people do with this song again this is showing this is showing the weaknesses in sonica because what happens is See, this song, the intensity of the song is about a, a nine. It starts out with that real pretty part, but it goes from like a three level of soft intensity to a eight or nine level of intensity. And the problem is she maxes out at about a five. So I kept feeling like, where's the other gears? You know, she's not getting there. She's seen it well. But it's not emotionally where this song needs or requires. So, again, it's she's not delivering what the song requires. So, to me, that means the arrangement, whoever's helping her, it doesn't she doesn't know how to build in enough contrast yet. Okay, look at what La Portia just did. <laughs> you know, if you look at La Portia, who's she's in her own category. You know, Kelly thinks she should win the whole show. I agree. You know, if, if this is a singing competition, nobody can compete with LaPortia. And the thing that's interesting, guess who I think the next best singer is? Olivia. She's the next best to LaPortia. You know, Olivia's way better than Sonica or Gianna Isabella, um, Avalon. Come on, they're not even the same league. Olivia's got... The, the thing is, see, Olivia's got a high gear that none of them have. And that's why Olivia can just spend time there and blow everybody away. And, and eventually, America will get it. You know, they will say, oh my gosh, these other girls just don't have that fourth and fifth gear. And Olivia's got such control over her first and second gear, that real soft, pretty stuff. I think she's got more control than these other girls. So again, that's depth. It's range of motion. You know, her her volume knob, her intensity knob, and and her, again, the, the ability to turn it on and off. You know, Mackenzie's the next best at showing that contrast emotionally. I want to see what Trent does again. You know, Trent could, Trent's got good contrast. Let's just see if he can get a more pleasant, pretty sounds in his voice consistently. Because the thing with Trent is he does stuff that distracts you from the pretty. Okay, so... Back to Sonica. <laughs> the whole point here is I'm underwhelmed again by her. So we may have seen all she's got to deliver, and Sonica might be one that doesn't go as far as people would like to see her go. You know, she's I'm I'm now seeing her not making top five. So let's see if she can put it together. Here's your support. Here's the info okay. you need to support. Double that. elimination. Watch. Double elimination. So let's see who's gonna go. Not Olivia. Okay, also, just so everybody knows, remember that this is not the actual live show performance. This is the rehearsal. That's why that lick was better during live. Gian Isabella, 
she's on the chopping block for sure. See, Lee Jean sounded better. Okay, Avalon's just kind of there, but it's just not nailing it. Again, Dalton's in just because he's got the right personality. Shaky. Mackenzie's just got, he's got the emotional contrast, even though I'd like to hear, he needs a couple more high-end gears. The Porsche needs nothing. <laughs> Sonica, can you just tell how she's maxed out prematurely compared to the Porsche? And Trent just killed those high notes. Boy, I mean, just effortlessly was soaring into those high notes. So, this next performer knows nothing about elimination. Okay, so there's no question, okay, and I'll just end this now with this Kelly performance. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure it'll be great. I'll be back for final concluding thoughts, okay? All right, let me just say something here. I like Trent, <laughs> not just because uh, finally, this final season finally mentions some kid named David Archuleta. You know, who, you know, I thought he was a fairly good singer. You know, he's one of the better singers that's been on the show. And, uh, you know, it was kind of cool to hear that Trent was really impacted by Imagine, as I think a lot of people were. Like I say, there was something spiritual about that performance. And uh, I think Trent's a spiritual guy. And I think that's why he connects at a very deep level with his songs. And, you know, he's been kind of a question mark to me because, again, there have been some things I really disliked about his performances. But I'll tell you what, after what I just saw, I just watched his performance. And, again, he, he killed it. I mean, as far as... <laughs> he did all the right things. Um, his vibrato wasn't intolerable. It was actually really good. But more importantly is he brought his personality to this song and I think he knocked it out of the park. So... I think that the thing that's hard to judge about Trent is the size of his heart. Because what I'm seeing is the ability to dig, dig deep. Yeah, La Porsche's got it in spades. But, you know, I, I, I have to eat my words about being upset that McKenzie wasn't one of the top four. Now, I still think he is the easiest to define as far as showing who he is and what he would be. But I think that as far as skills, Trent really showed some great stuff tonight. I got to tell you, I was impressed. So Trent is showing, again, an uptick, a major uptick. And uh, I think he's going to be really interesting to look at. So based on what I've heard so far, yeah, we know who the next few are that are going. And they're ones that should be gone anyway. <laughs> so um, it'll, it'll thin out the ranks quickly. A double elimination next week. I can already kind of feel who they likely will be. But uh, I think it's very important to realize that Trent has just made this a two-horse race. And he's setting a big distance now between what La Portia can do and what he can do. And even between, you know, now I think Olivia is the next in line to fit into that. And again, her song, she killed it. And it's unfortunate that she was the opener. But I think because they've been giving her those real good 
last end of show spots, it was time for her to have to be up early. So it's just, you know, the way it works. You know, David had to go first a couple times, and we always dreaded those weeks because they can be so forgettable. But um, Olivia's performance was so good, I don't think anybody needs to worry about her going anywhere. So she will break the uh, hex of the season so far of first person um, performing going. And I don't think that she's there because the producers want her gone. I think she's there because she's been getting the pimp spots. And they're trying to get her that number one spot early on because they see her going all the way. I see her being in the in the running. You know, it's it's becoming a three horse, four horse race. I mean this this actually is gonna be interesting, I think, you know. Dalton's Dalton's a horse to, to, to consider. Mackenzie's a horse to consider. Trent is now a horse to consider. The Porsche obviously is. Um, let's see. Who did I just uh, I just forgot somebody real obvious. Olivia. Olivia, the Porsche. Trent. Dalton. And Mackenzie. They're the five to watch. Everyone else, it's just a matter of time before they're gone. You know, Avalon's going to go quick. Um, John Isabella's going to go quick. Lee John's going to go quick. You know, and then if Sonica and Tristan don't step it up, well, I could see them going. So it's it's interesting who the next two are going to go. The first three are pretty obvious. The next two, it could be those two. And then, boy, when it gets to that top five, you know what? Right now it's a crapshoot. Even though LaPorsche is the horse to beat, everyone else that's that second to fifth positions, those are really open to see who can step it up so i do see this as a competition this is not a clear cut la porsche is going to win even though she is unbelievable um these it's just going to be a fun season i'm excited now i think this is this is becoming much more like i say of a competition as soon as we weed out these other few i wish jen blossel and jessica cabral were still around though all right can i just say that uh that song by Kelly Clarkson was very, very powerful, very moving. And uh highly recommend everybody taking a second look at that and listen. And, um, you know, you're going to feel exactly, whoa, what it means to connect to a song. And mean, you know, really feel what's going on there. I mean, that very, very powerful song, that's a difficult one for, I, I can see anyone that's going to have to sing it. Because, boy, there's a lot of emotion in that in that that song beautiful beautiful song and Kelly just did an absolutely just heart-wrenching rendition and it was beautiful 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 so um, what a great way to end this night let me just say you I'm I'm actually feeling pretty optimistic about the season all of a sudden you know I was re I'm still really upset about a lot of the way this stuff came together but you know even though I think Jen and Gen Geneve would be much more interesting than say John Isabella and Avalon even though I like them don't get me wrong but I just like I say I think they're more interesting it's not that I don't like these other people okay let's say I give them a a seven as far as just their personality interest level you know I don't see Sonica being any more interesting than she is you know and and I like her you know Tristan is sweet and innocent and yes they want her to become a country star but, you know, she's she's still really young. I don't see her getting good enough, quick enough, in the next few weeks to, to get to that level. So, again, you know, Trent, all of a sudden, he's, he's, a, he's a contender. You know, Mackenzie's a contender. Olivia is definitely a contender. You know, the young talent, Olivia's the one that's got definitely the most skills. Um, I just don't know if she's figured out. Again, she's still young. But she seems really mature in a lot of ways. And I could see her just, she's got a better sound than Celine Dion. Okay, as far as her power notes, there's a couple girls I've heard that have got that same kind of real gritty, raspy, rocky sound. And uh, I love it. So, you know, I, I see this being really interesting. And even Dalton, if he can put some singing skills into his quiver, he could be a contender. So, um... Despite the way we got to the top 10, 
despite the fact that three of the top ten are going to be gone pretty quick, and the next two likely to follow, you know, I, I see a pretty strong division between them and these final five. You know, can Sonica and Tristan beat out one of these more skilled musicians? Okay, let's just look at it like that. Let's back backwards from La Portia to Trent, Olivia, um, Mackenzie, Dalton. You know, those five have musicianship skills that the rest of the five do not have. Okay, Lee Jean, um, Gian Isabella. Um, Avalon, um, Sonica, and Tristan. Okay, so if we look at those five, we've got the young, raw talent that's very undeveloped, still needs a lot, a lot of room to grow. Okay, and they've all got potential. Don't get me wrong, but compare those to these other five that are much more seasoned. They've defined their image. They've got a lot more depth that they can dig into and that they're going to be able to draw on as each week continues. So, like I say, I see these other five fading. I see these other five being the stronger horses. Okay, this is going to be fun. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm sorry that these are way longer than I expected, but hey, I'm having fun. And if you guys don't want to watch it, I understand. At the same time, you know, I think there were, there's a lot of good ideas I'm trying to throw out there and share with you and get you thinking about this because ultimately like I say what is the motive behind this I just want you guys to to grow in your love and appreciation for music and to support live music and support other up-and-coming artists and when you recognize someone that's an up-and-coming musician you know let them you know listen to them give them some attention you know show appreciation and respect for for people that are trying to develop their skills and also, learn how to listen so that you can help people be realistic. Because, you know, the biggest problem and challenge I still see is kids that are just trying to run faster than they're ready for it. And so they're, they're, they're getting themselves out into the, the field prematurely, and, and they're se they need seasoning. And a lot of parents are just too anxious, and, and that's the thing I, I worry about. You know, the, the more tried and true method is get good and they will come <laughs> just get good don't think that and when i say good get great you know don't think that just getting good and getting compliments from all your friends and relatives is enough you know realize that you've got to figure out how to really be honest and open and educate your ears so you can evaluate just where you were at as a musician so that you do know where you're at and and you might need help from somebody you know, find a professional, find someone that's really good at this, whose ears are very educated and know how to distinguish the little nuances between what makes someone good, great, and world class. You know, Olympic level ears. You know, why do Olympic athletes go to a kind of like a school where there's specialty training in these very advanced areas? A lot of it's psychological. You know, knowing how to think. You know, how to approach what, what you're doing, you know, in a sport, in an event. Okay, same thing musically. Okay, everything that you do is basically an event. Okay, whether you're preparing to go on touring, whether you're writing a song, whether you're preparing to do a uh, live show, whether you're preparing for auditions. You know, preparing for an audition is really the most important thing because if you can learn how to prepare well and set a very high standard for what you do when you're preparing rather than just goofing off then what will happen is you can learn to perfect and improve little by little until you've got moments that are very well you know basically finessed and that's what really good artists do okay we heard some of that tonight and um, Again, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm encouraging you to listen to as much variety as you can. You know, listen to some of my other playlists. You know, I've, I'm in, I'm on this Brazilian kick right now, and I'm trying to study Jobim, Antonio Carlos Jobim. And the reason is, he, he's just one of the greatest melody writers of all time, composers. And 
you know his music whether you realize you do or not but what's so amazing to me is the quality of his songs you know again he's all of his songs are at least an eight or a nine and most of them are like 9.8s, 9.9s, and he's got some that are 10s. Just perfect songs, just perfect compositions. And it's amazing to me that it's kind of like, you know, Paul McCartney and John Lennon wrote all these great hits. And Paul McCartney's most noted for song like Yesterday. Well, Antonio Carlos Robin wrote like 50 Yesterdays. I mean, they're songs that are that epic in nature and the way... They're so unique and so original, the way that he composed them and wrote them. Just masterful. So, anyway, <laughs> um, I'm encouraging you to educate your ears. Listen to my Joe Bean collection. Listen to some of those songs. And um, what's fun is to listen to the different versions of the song. And the fact that you don't speak Portuguese, and a lot of songs are in that language, is even more why you can just try to connect with the feelings of the melodies and the grooves and the... The mood that it tries to set and just see if you can connect to any of these songs okay all right thanks for your support and uh making it through to the end this has been a long one but this has been a really good episode and i think this is going to be a fun last uh six weeks or so so look forward to seeing you um soon oh and again i'm going to figure out who wins the ticket by the next week and i'll also have some links set up okay so again Enjoy music, support live music, love music. Talk to you later.